Unsyndicated presents. With Sean Belegian. Listen, I, I'm I'm starting with this today, okay? I mean, unbelievable weather in the Detroit area today, right? Ever everybody, hopefully you got a chance to go out and in, enjoy it today. Blake shaking his head no. I think Todd nope. shaking said, no, I'm sorry, pal. You work all day uh, at mm-hmm. 760 WJR on the Mitch album show and sports rap there. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. All right. So I, I don't know if you guys know this. I, I like to smoke things. Okay. I'm, I'm a big fan. I like to meat, not drugs. Not I like, drugs. To, I like to, I like to smoke meats. And, um, I, I was, you know, one of those days all day by myself with these two rat dogs. And I was like, I, you know what, I'm going to make some wings. Can I tell you something? Sometimes in our barbecuing world, we all try to get too cute. We really do. We all try to get too cute and let's get this exotic flavor Hawaiian Chipotle, you know, whatever Himalayan salt. And we all try to get too cute. Can I tell you what I did today? You you know what at the old standby? And I sat back and I, I literally held the bottle in front of me. Okay. Let's use this diet Mountain Dew. Like it's it's my my container of Frank's Red Hot. And I said, Frank, I'm really sorry, man. I've disrespected you a lot over the years. You're just solid. You are really solid. When I decide that I want to make wings, you always do a great job. Blake, I'm telling you, I use this love chicken rub stuff, and I, I use Frank's as a base, and then I put the, the rub on top of there and put more Frank's on top of it. I'm telling you, it's one of the best batch of wings I've ever made, and it's with Frank's. Nothing, listen, Nothing fancy, Himalayan salt, sea salt, you know, Chipotle, Hawaiian, but whatever. I'm telling you, Frank's has off the air said, not a sponsor yet. Let's work on Frank, shall we? Frank's is just rock solid. It's it's your old standby. You know, you know what you're going to get with Frank's. I, I yeah. had to get that off my chest, man. I really did. I'm really happy. Do you feel better? A lot better. Let me tell you something. So not only like I, I basted, I basted it in. Right. And yeah. like the first wing that I ate, like I took a bite of it. And, and remember when we were in high school and you know, you, you wake up in the morning, you're like, Oh my gosh, I got this giant white head. I took a bite of this wing and that juice went flying straight out. Like that white head did that you pop before you went to school. I am telling you, it was it was so damn good. And Mike, have you tried Frank's dry rub? Yes. And Mike, you are exactly the guy that I'm talking to right now, okay? Because Mike and I have collaborated on, collaborated on many a thing. Frank's is just solid. Like, let's not disrespect Frank's anymore. Let's go with spicy garlic Himalayan. No, 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 no. All I need is Frank. Frank's going to take good care of me, you know? So... There, I got that off my chest. I'm really happy you like for wings? you. you. You like wings, Blake? Yeah, Blake? we we've talked we've talked about this. I like wings, um, but I don't want to. I don't want to upset you. You're on a roll, so okay. We're not gonna. All right, fantastic. I don't want to do that to you. All right, good. How you doing, pal? You all right? I'm hanging in there. I'm hanging in there. It's you know, it's that you know election time, all that all that stuff. I don't like. It's uh, it's been good though. Fifty-eight good. days until the draft. Fifty. There we days. go. I needed 58, that. Fifty-eight days until the draft. That that's what we let's focus on that because mm-hmm. I am going to tell you right now. Um, this has been the weirdest draft year for me that I can ever remember. I like honestly, I feel, I feel so behind. It's insane. Because again, for me, my prep usually starts in December. You know, I mean, when the Lions are out of it and everything, Blake, I'm not joking. I feel so out of it. And it's really weird because 
I'm going to sound like a fan here. Well, I guess I am. I'm still trying to get accustomed to this top 10. And the top 10 has been very fluid. You and I said two months ago, J.J. McCarthy is going early. No matter what some of the early stuff said, J.J. McCarthy is too damn good. He's going to go early. But it is amazing to me um, that I'm not paying as much attention to the top 10 as I have, well, in essence, my entire lifetime because the Lions – for a majority of my lifetime, we're somewhere in that close vicinity. It's amazing how that works out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's got to be kind of relieving for you, though. You know, you get to pay attention to other things. Hey, don't don't say relieving for me. You're in. We've established this. You are in. I told now. you I was on a one year deal. Well, when does the when does the one year deal end? Does it end the day that they lose to San Francisco, or do, now we have to start all over again trying to talk when, to get in the Lions? When, when you know how the like NFL like the league year starts, whenever the league year starts, which I think is like right before the draft. I think it. Yeah, I think it's literally yeah. right before. Le- I'm a, I'm on the league year. Thing. My buddy in the UP, by the way, Jason said, grilled up some wings myself tonight. Usually use Frank's, but tonight I went with B dub spicy garlic. That's my go to. Mike, Mike can vouch for that. I, I'm always, I usually go with spicy garlic. Um, that's just kind of been my go to. But I, you know what? I went with Frank's and I have no regrets. No, no regrets with that about Frank's. Um, I'm a does Parmesan this- garlic guy myself. I love Parmesan garlic. All right, we're going down that road. That's fine with me. Um, The problem that I have with the Parmesan garlic when I do it at home is I can't get it to stick. Does that make sense? Okay. I I can't get, unless I do the time honored, get them done, fire up the oven at about 500 degrees, immediately take the wings off and then put them in the oven to kind of, coat it on and kind of bake it on flash bake it if you will i have a tough time on my on my smoker getting the parmesan garlic to quote unquote stick okay that makes sense todd asked a very important question by the way blake were you only in the limo for the free beer and smoked meat come on be honest because you know that i'm gonna have some barbecues and everything where you you know you you missed out on the one that we had with lomas back in in Mm -hmm. november before mm-hmm. I got fired. And then no, you hey, knew whoa, that we were going to have another one. Why also was I not there? You were working. Yes. I was running your show. Thank you. you. Could go, and and Just, Blake works. That, that's how yeah. you could you could legitimately end so many uh, conversations about Blake. And Blake was working. <laughs> Uh, oh, I like what I like what Mike said. Well, I'm going to apply the franchise tag to you. There's nothing you can do. I'm going to slap that franchise tag on. You are in the limo. You're in. That means that that comes with guarantees, though, Sean. Well, of that course, comes you're with gonna guarantees. Get bar- you're going to get some barbecue. We'll have beer over here. Everything will be good. Okay. Mm-hmm. You'll get everything that you want. That. In your little. You'll get everything that you want in your little contract. All right. Um, <laughs> I need some playoff wins. That's what I need. Well, you got that. You got two. Yeah, I need. Year. You asked for one, and you got two. I want winners. Uh, I mean, we've established that. Hey, uh, speaking of the draft, uh, listen, we're we're gonna have a draft show again next week uh, with our friends from the Detroit Sports Commission. Want to remind everybody. Go to www.visitdetroit.com backslash 2024 NFL draft. All the info you need, including the NFL One Pass app. Highly recommended. Get the NFL One Pass app for access to free draft viewing in the area in and around campus Martius Park. So uh, make sure you do that. That comes straight from our friends at the Detroit Sports Commission. What do you think about this uh, this um, this top ten? Are, are I, I'll tell you what. I think there's a heck of a lot of talent coming out of this draft, Blake. And I, quite frankly, one man's opinion. I, I'm not sure that it's getting at least the love around here that I think it should be getting. Yeah. No. I. I it's deep. Every year, you you know, we say, oh, is this the deepest draft that we've seen in however many years? It's deep. It's a deep draft. 
it may not be like I don't know because this year especially I think a lot of teams are going to be really looking for a quarterback because next year's quarterback class is uh, poop to put it nicely. So this year's quarterback class, we could see a lot of guys get taken earlier than a lot of people have expected. I am I am telling you right now, just one man's opinion. Uh, like, honestly, I think we could see at least five in the first round. And I'm not joking when I say that. I think we could see at least five. Yeah. And qu- quite frankly, I'm telling you right now, somebody is going to take a chance on Michael Penix earlier rather than later. Mm-hmm. I, I know I've seen places talk about him mid second round, maybe early second round. I mean, it is completely legitimately possible that you could see six quarterbacks taken in the first round. And I, that is not an exaggeration. Uh, when no doubt Bo about it. gets taken in the first round, I'm going to like throw up everywhere. And it's going to happen. You, you, know. you know, you, you know, all right. So, you know, I mean, let's, let's, uh, May is going to go in the first round. Obviously, that that no doubt about that. Caleb Williams is going to go in the first round. J.J. McCarthy, I, I, I still laughed that that was even a discussion a few weeks ago. We talked about it here. Shockingly, you didn't disagree with me when I'm like, what What are people missing with this guy? This guy's first round talent all day. Mm-hmm. I, I think you, you've you got a situation where um, there's another no-brainer will be Jaden Daniels, but Bo Nix is going to go in the first round. You know it. I know it. Let's like not pretend. Yeah. The question to me again is where does a guy like Penix go? And then you got a guy like Spencer Rattler who a couple of years ago, people were talking about him being a first round pick just a couple of years ago. I don't think he will this year. Before he got his job taken from Caleb by Caleb Williams at Oklahoma. I mean, he he was, he was the darling. Like everyone loved his arm talent. Yep. No doubt about it. Um, But you know, we'll, we'll wait and see how it it plays itself out. You know, for, for the lions, there were a plethora of choices. I hate having the conversation. I'll agree with what Brad Holmes said um, a few days ago when talking about the underwear Olympics, and we'll get to that momentarily. Um, The mock drafts are silly. It's fun to play. There's no doubt about that. But when you're talking about where the Lions pick, there are so many things that can happen before we get down there, Blake. It's almost an exercise in futility. Now, does Mm -hmm. that stop nerds like you and me from, I would say I did five today. I probably did five today. Um, does that stop us from going through that exercise of futility? No, but at the end of the day, we don't really know who's going to be there. We really truly don't. We can, we can take a guess, but we really don't. And I'm going to say it again. We're not even to the point in time yet where we start finding out what teams really think about this player and that player. We're probably a a good, I don't want to say a month away, probably three weeks away from that yet where we really start to find out what teams really truly think. And then the draft beat Knicks to cover their own arses have to sit back and go, well, this guy's stocks rising. He hasn't done anything in three weeks. What are you talking about? How's his stock rising? That, that bit drives me out of my mind, man. We're in smoke screen season. Yes. All the teams are like leaking stuff on purpose, getting stuff out there to try and like, leverage stuff you know the whole the thing we've heard a million times about Caleb Williams how he doesn't want to play in Chicago all that kind of stuff like that's what's getting out there so that teams can potentially trade up for cheaper value that kind of stuff Jim said aren't the lines obligated historically to take the best DB available you might rabbit I mean you might this year I mean you they definitely need a CB uh, they definitely need an OG. They they need a wide receiver or two. I think it's smart to take a couple cornerbacks. I really do. I, I you you can't have enough cornerbacks. I think you're you're probably looking at a DT. That would be a nice thing. So, mm-hmm. and you know we're not even taking into effect a lot of times. There's a guy sitting there on the board that you didn't expect to be there, and. I don't have any problem with BPA. I think the Lions are in a position right now. And Blake, call me a slap dick if you want here. I think the Lions are are in a position right now, based on where their roster is, to maybe go with 
BPA and a quote unquote luxury pick here and there. I, I really, I'm not, I'm not adverse to that twofold by what the roster looks like today. And the fact that, well, the guy who's earned our trust is the guy making the calls. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I would be frustrated if they don't go defense in the first round. Personally, I just think that they really need to add and whether it be at any position, I think that they need to add depth, but, I mean, you you can't really argue with what Brad Holmes has done. If he ends nope. up going offensive, like I'm not going to argue with him. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm I'm getting texts right now. Uh, Port here in Northern knocked off the Warren D. LaSalle Pilots in the high school hockey playoffs. That's an upset. So. Mike just mentioned it. I got a couple tucks as we were sitting here talking. So I guess you could say breaking high school hockey news. All right. Um, Blake, Welcome can I to say what this? Uh, no, Blake, can I say this to your point though? All right. Um, last year, didn't we learn the lesson about um, where to take guys and when to take guys, et cetera, et cetera. Because it's, if you remember, people lost their minds uh, mm-hmm. by, by what Brad did early. And this is, this is the cachet that I talk about. I think in years gone by, I would have agreed with you. I probably would have lost my, or will lose, would have lost my mind if the scenario you just painted happened where, are you serious? We need, we need a corner and, that kid from Arkansas was sitting there, whatever the case may be. Um, I don't, I don't think I'm going to go down that road anymore. I, I, I think based on the fact that you literally have a competent guy in there that, that I'm not in a position to question it anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I, I agree. He's, he's built up enough cachet at this point where he can, he can have a couple of years of doing whatever he wants. And then if those years go bad, then we can talk about it. But he's built it up where he can do whatever he wants. I'm fine. Uh, Jim said the wings are embarrassing the caps. Four, to, the four to one. Is it really? Four to one, yep. Ovi kind of woke up a little bit um, and, and scored a few goals in a few games. I think he's on pace for, what, 24 now, which would mean – he would be 50 behind next year at 39 years old. I still maintain. I don't think he's going to catch Gretzky. I just don't. I, I don't. So other time is starting to show real quick. Valeno scored since we've started and then Goss despair scored his second of the night. So Blake is hockey elite green. now. Second. I'm I'm so in on this. Team. I can't. I can't I'm wait. So to, no, listen, I can't wait to talk to you about it in just a moment, but. Can I talk to you about our friends? Cheesy podcast segue. Can I talk to you about our friends at the Wealth Advantage Group? And when I say friends, I don't use that term lightly. Uh, Those two guys, my next door neighbors, my friends, my financial advisors, well, my old next door neighbors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? Look no further than Wealth Advantage Group, located in historic downtown Northville and owned by those two guys. Two brothers with over 20 years of industry experience, they understand that your financial goals are as unique as you are. That's why they offer personalized expert guidance to help you navigate the complexities of financial planning. Now, whether you're saving for retirement, getting ready to sell your company, or already in retirement, these guys can help guide you through every step of your financial journey. They work with clients throughout all stages of life and have clients in over 20 states. The investment world is complex, so if you're ready to start taking your finances more seriously, it might be time to work with the experts. Reach out to those two cats, Mike and Jeff, at the Wealth Advantage Group at 248-773-8574 or view their website at www.thewealthadv.com. Good stuff. Appreciate uh, those guys as always. Blake, I'm going to transition to this because I, I know I mentioned this the other day. You're all in on this team. I think I'm it's so I think in. it's I think it's great, dude. And I didn't have to make any deals with you. I no. didn't have to say win a playoff series, you know, no. like we did with the Lions. You, you, it is amazing. And Jeremiah said this. How many wings car flags are on your car, Blake? 
guess what? They're popping up again, man. They're all what? over the place. I, I literally, know. I went to the gas station today to go pick up some dip, and I was like, there's a wings car flag. What is this, 1997? Oh, there's another one. It's 1997 all over again. Oh, this team is fun to watch, man. And I mean, we talked about it on Sunday, and then that game on Sunday happened a few hours later. And I was I was in before that game, but man, that was that game Sunday. It was, and I know everyone's talked about it already. Everything that oh, game was electric. Me. It was here, it, like it was great. Do you know? I'm gonna sound like um, the the guy who is is trying too hard here. Do you know what I like most about it, Blake? Is they played like garbage for the a vast majority of the game, and they won. Mm -hmm. because I have seen that routine play itself the other way more times than you can shake a stick at in, in the past, really six, seven years, yeah. longer than that. How many times did we see the wings pick up their game against a good team? Because that's what the red wings are right now. This is a good team. I don't think anybody's going to use the G word, the other G word. This is a good team. Okay. With, with a lot of good pieces, but how many times did we watch the wings under, under Blash and, and even, you know, the current situation play against one of a, the better teams in the league or a good team, give them everything they could handle and then kind of self-destruct it at the wrong time to win that game to pick up two points the way they did in a game that honestly, I think anybody would tell you they, they didn't play well. I, I think that's a good thing. I really do. That's, that's a good thing to me, Blake, when you can pick up two on a night where you are so far away from your best, that's a good thing. In Chicago, like everyone had talked about, they were, that was like a playoff game for them. Cause they, Absolutely. they're playing for nothing, but Kane's homecoming and Chelios Jersey retirement, like all that stuff. I mean, that it was, it was so much fun, man. It's, it's fun having a fun team to root for. That's exciting to watch. There's names on this team that non hockey elites recognize like just all of it. And it's great timing, man. It's just, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. And especially when both of our basketball teams stink right now, and then the NBA basketball team stinks right now, it's perfect timing because there's there's literally nothing else in the sports world to pay attention to besides this team. All right, Fick, are you still in there? Because you you brought this up, and and I see Jeremiah Fick in there, and and Jeremiah does some stats for a few basketball teams, including Michigan State. Um, I think people, if if you're counting on Michigan State being a tournament team right now look if i were a betting man I, i'll say yes but there's no guarantee if if you look at what their record is now and what they have left on the schedule okay mm -hmm. I, I mean l legitimately they could go what off the top of my 18 and 13 okay yeah. I, th I think i think they could that's not like it wouldn't shock record. me yeah it's it's not it's not going out on a limb that they finish that God forbid they lose the first weekend of the, or the first game of the tournament, right? Michigan state at 18 and 14. Now they've got enough cachet where, where you could make the argument that maybe they get in, but I, I don't know for the first time in a long time, Blake, I I'm really wondering to myself, wow, could they almost play themselves out of the tournament? I, the path is there, so to speak. It really is. The path is there. So their remaining games, and right now they're at 17 wins. They're at Purdue on Saturday. Then they have Northwestern, who yep. always gives them fits. I don't know what it is. Like that Northwestern always plays Michigan State tough, even when Northwestern's been down. And then they play at Indiana. And none Indiana of those are guaranteed wins. Indiana is is a dumpster fire, but you know at Indiana at Assembly yeah. Hall. I mean, come on, you know I I still say the toughest home advantage is a road college basketball game. I, I really do because mm -hmm. you know the, the kids are right on top of you. I think that's the biggest home advantage in all of sports. So I mean, legitimately, like like Blake, just looking at their schedule. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let's say they go one and two. You're eighteen and thirteen. 
mm-hmm. because that's that's kind of where my brain's at. Is I they're going to lose to Purdue. That you mm-hmm. know the Northwestern game, as you mentioned, I'll say one and two. Well, you're eighteen and thirteen. It depends who you match up with in the Big Ten tournament. That that is not a guarantee. They could easily it, miss the tournament or be in that first four. Like oh my gosh. games. Could you imagine? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, real shame. Uh, it's a real shame. It's a real shame. Jeremiah said they're a bubble team in their schedule. The next two weeks is brutal. They're right there. Like, I, I don't think enough people are like taking that in. Oh, Michigan state will get in. Will they like, I, and you guys know where I sit, you know, I, I'm a Spartan fan. I, for the first time I'm sitting there going, oh, are they going to get in? Could yeah. you imagine that? Oh my gosh. Um, listen, so many other things we have to hit on. Can I talk to you about our friends at legacy first? Um, yeah, because, of course. Well, thank you. And, and Blake's going to get that beautiful little graphic up. Look at those graphics. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Hey, did you know that thousands of Metro Detroiters have already called legacy partners to get help with their home and auto insurance? Our friends at legacy partners, one of Southeast Michigan's top independent insurance agents and provide a full service, one-stop solution for all of your insurance needs, personal and business, large or small. Uh, The gang there, Joe, Alex, Dave have helped our listeners by fixing mistakes other agents have made, asking the right questions to get the right coverage put in place to properly protect you. And yeah, the big one, help save you money at the same time. Chances are, if you haven't checked your policies in the last year, you are paying too much and you could be underinsured. What are you waiting for? Great guys, give Legacy Partners a chance to help with your home, your cars, your life insurance, Medicare enrollment, or your business insurance needs. Get a pen, 586-209-4106. That's 586-209-4106. Or visit LegacyPartnersINS.com to get started with your new quotes. Really appreciate everything Legacy did. Uh, this is great. Jason said, just waiting on Hasman to come out with flying elbows on Shauner over saying positive things about the wings. Um, Jason, Jason remembers the the old bit that we used to have. I, I used to play a game on the radio called Not My Fault because I think a lot of times people, it was misguided anger. If if you were if you were talking less than favorably about Michigan football, which they deserved it for a long time, if you were talking less than favorable about the Detroit Red Wings, which they deserved it for a long time, it was like people would get mad at you. And I, I would sit back and go, it's not my fault. I, I didn't do it. Like this is mm-hmm. like what you, you know what I mean? And it's, that's always, that's always kind of made me laugh. And it's, it's funny because uh, I remember talking Jason to you about this specifically and Blake, you can apply to this Michigan football fans. Like were always so mad at me. They were always so mad at me. That's because you're and, mean. And, but at the end of the day, you know what always happens? You know what always happens? They get it after the fact. Yeah. Always. They get they like when you see when you compare the Rich Rod era or the Brady Hoke era to to in particular the last few years of the Jim Harbaugh era and the way he's done it without all those five stars and you know, oh, this is the greatest recruiting class ever. It's amazing how many times people get it after the fact. You know what I mean? And I think I've gone through that a little bit with the Red Wings the last few years. I know our mutual friend, Blaine Fowler, when we were doing our, our hockey shtick, even as recent as a couple of years ago, people would, why are you down on the wings? Because they're not ready yet. Like, yeah. like Steve Eiserman is not going to rush this. And, and Steve Eiserman, when we're talking about cachet, is a guy that deserves the benefit of the doubt. And, and I'm not saying that they're ready to go win a Stanley Cup yet. Blake, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I don't know if they're ready to win a playoff series yet. And you have to win four, of course, to win Mm -hmm. the Stanley Cup. But we're not even five years in yet. And this was, whether people wanted to hear it or not, this was going to be a five-year plan. We're not even five years in yet. And I think for the first time 
in this almost five years, there are a lot of people, both hockey fan and, and Blake's alike, who are sitting back and going, you know what? They're fun. They're winning games. And I like a lot of the pieces. Mm-hmm. And that's cool. Uh, that's a, I'm one of those people. I, I couldn't give a crap if you jump on a bandwagon or not, or you, you're putting on a, a car flag for the first time in 17 years or whatever the case. I Come on. The, the, the more hockey fans, the better, because it gives losers like me a chance to talk more about hockey. So I like that. That yeah. makes me happy. Anytime we can get an enjoyable product, man. And that's and what Todd just said in the chat too. I I mean I agree with a thousand percent. Like the people that attack like the fair weather bandwagon fans, like you're saying, like I, like I, I'm sorry. I enjoy my happiness. Like I don't need to deal with your sadness all the time. It's the same thing this, I went through with the Lions. One thousand percent. One one thousand percent. Why am I, I gonna root I, for a loser my whole life? No, I. I told you that was the one thing that Dan Campbell said down the stretch that I thought was stupid. I really, I, I really, I thought it was stupid. Oh, you can't jump on now, Dan. You don't understand what this franchise has done to the human psyche. Mm-hmm. Like you don't, like you don't get it. You're my guy. I love you. Hope you stick around for many years. Hope the best is yet to come. How on earth could I tell one of my friends? Using me as an example, Blake, 53-year-old guy who's seen so much crap, okay? How can I how could I say to them, no, it's different this time. Trust me. Yeah. Right? And that's what Blake, and that's why I mean we joke about you jumping in and Lomas and I trying to get you to jump in and enjoy it and everything. That's all it was, was a joke. I guys your age, my son, who's 24, you see nothing but crap. Yeah. So I, I don't, I'm sorry. I, I don't, I don't, I don't like that stuff. I really don't. It, it's like, you have to earn that man. It's just like, you know, a, a general manager has to earn trust. If Steve Eiserman hasn't earned your trust, that's your fault. Mm-hmm. If Brad Holmes hasn't earned your trust, that's your fault. But I'm just not one to throw faith and trust out there and just go, well, you're my guy. So I love you. No, you have to earn it. Right. hundred percent. I agree a hundred percent. Well, you just went on a really good rant All right. and I just wanted to, we, we just talked a little college basketball and right. I told you, I wanted to talk about this court storming thing that happened over the weekend. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, as, as you mentioned earlier in the show, I'm part of the Mitch album show. We had Jay Billis on the Mitch album show the other day and he was on ESPN and all that stuff. And I genuinely, most of the time, really like Jay Billis. He's very pro player, which I agree with 100%. Um, he hates the NCAA, which I agree with 100%. His thought process of how to ban court storming was one of the most idiotic things I've ever heard in my life. I don't know if you saw what he said. I I'm go, 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 go. I want, I want to see he you wants, go off. Go. He wants to arrest everyone that storms a court and that'll end it right then we are gonna we're gonna arrest we're gonna deport them all like a bunch of migrants it's insane what store court storming wow i just had a brain meltdown it's part of college basketball okay i understand there is dangers in it i understand all of that first of all filipowski tried to shove the guy that allegedly hurt him and now his ankle is just a little sore too weird how that happened like it's part of college basketball this is not the nba this is not the nfl it's college basketball on campus these games are meant for the students to watch and have fun at and all that stuff you want to ban something that is so much a part of college basketball it's insane I it does not make any sense to me. Good for you. Good. And can I, now I'm going to sound like the token old guy. And, and this mm-hmm. is going to add that I'm going to throw my two cents in. Welcome to the hot take club, Billis. And, and that's why, like, honestly, like Blake, I'm serious. I can't, I can't watch half of, of the drivel 
that is on that network anymore. I can't. No. And, and that's part of the reason why I say for all the things that ESPN does wrong, when you find certain things like game day that they do right, you, you almost have to remind people, okay, they still do things right. I'm sorry. I'm an older guy. And I, I don't like the hot take stuff. And I'm never going to turn to hot take guy. I'm just never. No. I thought, that was a hot take. I really, I really thought that was a hot take. Um, Jay, why haven't you brought this up before? I mean, you, you, you've been around forever. You've been yeah. a member of the media forever. I remember you playing at Duke back in the eighties. I also remember your brilliant acting career as well. I come in peace. If you don't believe me, go oh, look no. that up. Yeah. Go, I, 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 like peace. I said, I, th I think Jay Billis is, is, most of the time very good he gets a sure. little he gets a little dookie from time to time you know a little i'm better i'm better than everyone else and like okay whatever but like i genuinely agree with most of what he says that was the most insane thing you want to arrest him i a bunch of college kids so if, did fun. you can i ask you have you ever stormed the court or have you ever ran on the field after a college football game Never did? No, I oh. haven't. Uh, I think I, I did. did in high school, like, storm the court after a basketball game because I didn't play high school basketball. I was very much the leader of the student section, as you can imagine me, you know, just getting rowdy in the front row. So, yeah, I think we did it once or twice in high school, but that's about it. I, it is it is so much fun. Now, if you're an adult doing things like that, I think you got problems. You're a loser, yeah. Help. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. But like for me, being a senior in high school and running onto the field at Spartan Stadium after they knocked off Michigan was awesome. Are you kidding me? It was that was that was awesome. I I loved every second of it. You know, I mean, and you're a college kid. Yeah, that's that's fine. Like, come on. I it's, agree with you. It's supposed to be fun, man. It's just supposed like it's college no, athletics. No, it's not. What are you like, talking come about? Come on. Speaking of college, I know we got to get to this in a second. My aunt Maureen said, listening and watching the wings, double the fun. Is it four one still? See, that's the one thing about doing the show. Like I, I, I've always told you this. Um, and this goes back to when I was doing the radio shows. I didn't like having the TV on in the studio because I know with my like raging ADD, I'd be like this the whole time. Yeah. Huh? Did you say something, Blake? So I is it four one five? five Thank Five you. to two. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, speaking of hockey, our friends with the Motor City Rockers are back in action this weekend. Make sure that you check them out. Uh, big game on March 1st. That's this Friday. The Blue Ridge Bobcats are in town at Big Boy Arena. 735, the puck drops there. And then a return engagement the next day. As they take on the blue, the Whiteville Blue Ridge Bobcats again, uh, make sure that you go to MC Rocker, or excuse me, MC Rockers Hockey.com. You can get your tickets. It's a great place to go. Uh, check it out at Big Boy Arena Friday night, 735, Saturday night. 605 it's fantastic hockey make sure that you check that out and as our buddy ben the voice of the rockers points out saturday is education night as well so as i said mm -hmm. friday night and saturday night you got blue ridge coming into town that's a fantastic thing make sure you check them out uh it's a great brand of hockey it's a great time at big boy arena uh they really do a great job interacting with the fans and they get what it's all about, which is exactly what you just said, young man, fun. It should be fun. Like, no, stop it. The fun police. I'm tired of the fun police. Sports are fun. They're supposed Gosh. to be at least. Absolutely. All right, pal. Um, you told me before the show started and I purposely did not look at this, but something right up our alley came down the pipe. Can you tell me all about it? Yeah, so I purposely didn't look at it because I wanted to be surprised. As we were just ripping on ESPN. ESPN's own Bill, Bill Connolly, who is a great college football writer, he ranked the top 80 quarterbacks of the 2000s. Okay? So there's a couple things I wanted to point out in this. 
first of all, there's two quarterbacks from the state of Michigan on this list. Can you guess who they are? Well, J.J. McCarthy's one. He's not. Really? He's not on this list. Don't, don't. Did they put Shoelace on there? Mm-hmm. Denard Robinson is the 54th. He's not very high on the list. Okay. And if you're telling me, if you're telling me like the impact he had on college football during that time, like I, as a Michigan fan, and I loved, I loved Denard. I know, I understand why you didn't. I get it. I loved watching him play. He never he beat anybody. Watch. He was fun to watch. He was fun. Okay, he Those was teams fun. Stunk give, with that. They would have been I'll horrible give, without him. And he never played well against a good defense, but no. that's another story. But if if we're if the theme of the show is fun, he was fun to watch. I'm with you. Tate Forcier, that, that, that was mean. I met Tate, Tate Forcier, Forcier once. That's awesome. I good met job, Tate Forcier Nick. once when I was in high school, and he was as dumb as a box of rocks. Forces <laughs> of nature, right? All right, so who's the other one? Uh, I let, take a guess. Come on, Kirk Cousins mm-hmm. did not. There is not a single Spartan on this list. Who? I'm gonna say this name, and you're gonna be pissed at yourself that you didn't say it. Dan Lefevre. Oh yeah, you're right. Fifty fifth. He was yeah. one spot behind Denard. Um, Tim Tebow's number one, right? Uh, he is not. Who's number one? Oh, take a guess. Vince Young? Baker Mayfield. Number two is Cam Newton, which I think Cam Newton, he didn't have the longest time, but his one year was probably the most impactful single year in college football history. Vince Young, three. Tim Tebow, four. I uh, have no idea. I will say it again. I, people are going to think I'm a ge- I have no idea why Tim Tebow is disrespected the way he is. It, I, I, don't I don't get either. it. I don't. I, I, don't I agree. He, I'm serious. He's probably the best college football quarterback I've ever seen. Like, I'm serious. I don't, I don't hesitate saying that. I, the, so with Baker, like, I don't think he's a, uh, top five but he's no. easily a top he's top 10 i'll put him top 10 sure like he did it at two different schools somebody's trying to be too smart he was very good but uh fifth was joe burrow should have been higher greatest passing season of all time and i love him uh <laughs> deshaun watson six kyler murray seven good. And then eight Lamar. Lamar's too high, I think, in my opinion. Mariota nine. RG three ten. That it's he was I think people forget how he was phenomenal, man. He he really was. RG three was phenomenal. Trevor Lawrence and Colt McCoy were the next two. And then Johnny Manziel was thirteenth. Uh, so. Ben said, fun fact, Denard Robbins and Tom Brady are the only two Michigan quarterbacks to win BCS bowl games. Um, That's crazy. You, <laughs> you know, I'm going to say it again, though. Like, honestly, can we can we like legitimately talk about Denard Robinson's career? He lit up bad teams. Yes. Unbelievably so. Like, if you went back and look at, at playing really good teams or really good defenses, it was it was night and day it his really best, was it was his best win by far was that notre dame the night game no question no by question far. yeah no no question he was he was excited hey but consider the source and i have said this to this man's face i was terrified of devin gardner and i still think if they could have protected him even a little bit i think devin gardner could have been one heck of a quarterback they i had, was terrified of devin gardner if they had terrified. any offensive line Literally, yeah, just a little bit. Protect him. Like well, somewhat of a pulse. He was broken. I mean, literally, they, oh, yeah. they the, that poor guy was broken. It was, it was just, it mm. was sad to watch. It really was. So, who, um, who would be your number one, Tebow? Tebow. I, I, I know. I've told you that even before this list came out. I, 
one of the worst conversations I've ever had in my life. And I know I've told you this privately. Um, I don't know if I've ever brought this up here. Um, so I've been a Heisman Trophy voter for 16 years now. And when I had a conversation with like five other fellow voters whose average age was probably 107 um, about Tebow and, and I was adamant he should have won in 2008. Every reason they gave me as to why he shouldn't win had something to do with Archie Griffin. Yeah. Huh? What? What? Well, Archie Griffin, I, I, he was, that was a real college football player. That should be the only two time win. Huh? What, what, what on earth are you no. talking about? And um, I stand by it then and now. He should have won it that year. He he they, they went and won another national championship. He did Tebow things. I, you know, we can sit here all day and talk about, well, he wasn't a pro quarterback. I, I don't give two craps. It's not the guy was a football. phenomenal, phenomenal college football yes. player. I don't I don't think he gets his due. Honestly, I don't. I think perhaps some of his religious convictions are held against him in a certain regard. If you peel away everything about Tim Tebow and just talk about his performance, he was phenomenal. He was, mm -hmm. he was phenomenal period. End oh. of story. I, I say again, he's probably the best quarterback I've ever seen in college football. Tommy Frazier with that Nebraska team was unbelievable. He was a perfect fit for the way they rolled uh, back in the 90s, but T Tebow was unbelievable, man. He really was. He was incredible. Can I give you one name on this list that's yes. criminally low? Mm. Number 30, Pat White. Yes, I agree. With Pat you. White is was if Pat White came 10 years later like the things Pat White did in that West Virginia offense in 2007, 2000, like he was insane. They were fun. That was, that was like the ESPN noon game. It seemed like West Virginia was always on a noon on ESPN, you know? Mm hmm. They, yeah. that, I mean, Pat White, Steve Slayton. Oh, Slayton like, was so good. They were so good, man. And they ran that stupid 3 3 5 that you hate. You like it? No, no, no. I hate it too. Also, Jameis is too low. Jameis is sixteenth. So, Jameis. Yeah, is, he should be. He he should be higher. There's Jameis no was doubt. awesome. He really was. He he really. I mean, Captain Douche, but he was he was awesome. He really was. Uh, all right. Before we get out of here, uh, I want to talk to you about our friends at Broadwell. Realtors, all right. Broadwellhomes.com is the place to go when it comes time to sell your house, whether you're buying, selling, both, whatever the case may be, you need to contact the agent that I recommend, and that's Lindsay Broadwell. Your house is probably the biggest investment you will ever make, and that's why you need a pro. Lindsay grew up on the mean streets of Northville and has expanded her team all over Southeast Michigan. She's an expert in all facets of the business. When it is time to move, our friend Lindsay and her team will make sure you get the most out of your house and that everything, and I mean everything, goes smoothly when finding you a new home. Buyers, sellers, first-time buyers, doesn't matter. Make sure you contact Lindsay at broadwellhomes.com. She will help you with everything from start to close. Licensed realtor at Real Broker LLC. Start your search today at broadwellhomes.com. Blake, we got to get out of here, my friend. Boy, that flew by yeah. tonight. Really. By the way, by. Uh, Mike, Mike said, "Don't go down a path." Oh, I'm going to. I love, I love YouTube rabbit holes. <laughs> I, mean, I, I sent my buddy Chris Nyland or a YouTube rabbit hole today, and he actually retweeted it. So Chris Nyland's going to be on What the Puck next week. Uh, a mutual friend is going to be on What the Puck on Thursday. Uh, Mark Beaufay is going to join us. Uh, that's all for tonight. Blake, always a pleasure. Thanks for checking us out. Tell your friends about it. Until next time, I'm Sean Belegian. See you. Off the Air with Sean Belegian, featuring... Sean Belegian and Blake Matrizak. Produced by Todd Losey and Blake Matrizak. Executive produced by Sean Belegian and Todd Losey. Theme song, incidental music, and related sound effects are from Play It Loud by Jam Studio. Engineering, mixing, 
and graphic design support provided by the unsyndicated podcast team. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Off the Air with Sean Belegian on all your favorite channels. While you're there, be sure to rate and review the podcast. Got something to say to Sean? Call the unsyndicated hotline at 248-237-3257.